the druid of Harley Street, the spiritual psychology of Eric Graham Howe. Please drop a comment below and subscribe if you have not already as we get into this fabulous collection of the main writings of this remarkable yet overlooked psychologist of the 20th century who was mentor and friend to people like Krishnamurti and Alan Watts as well of course as notable psychologist R.D. Lang who says at the front of the book right there he is a master psychologist of E. Graham Howe Graham Howe was born in London on February 3rd, 1897, so that makes him an Aquarius and just born three days after me, so a rare thinker indeed, who is the rarest of astrological signs. Now here on the back of the book is some remarkable commendations. Eric Graham Howe says, It is my belief that any psychological system must be unsatisfactory and misleading, both in theory and practice, until it does admit our essentially spiritual nature. And one of the reviewers on the back says, This is an extraordinary labor of love that finally makes the teachings of E. Graham Howe brilliantly available to a wide audience, including psychotherapists of all persuasions. Howe is singular in his ability to integrate the wisdom of the East with humanistic elements of psychoanalysis in a way that is unique and intuitively accessible to clinicians who do not have a background in either tradition, destined to become a classic, and I certainly do agree. As you know, I've been reading through the Druid and Psychologist clothing in preparation to talk with its author, Dr. Ian C. Edwards, and along the way I discovered that you could get this massive tome of the sort of the best of all of E. Graham's Howe's writings compiled by William Stranger and edited with a little biography by this Mr. Stranger, and it's just been a delight to be able to dive into the original writings of Howe while reading about the analysis of those writings in Dr. Edwards' work. It's just been such a treat this year to uh, expand my psychological knowledge and really revise some of the views that I've held. I was, for example, always a believer that that whole affirmation type of talk really was effective for the people that committed to it. And you see similar elements of that kind of practice in most spiritual forms and religions and daily affirmations being just a trope within spirituality, especially as they're applied and used to overcome barriers. But Eric Graham Howe has a very different approach to them than you would expect, and, and I think you should consider looking into his work, if only for the sake of alleviating yourself of some of the psychobabble nonsense that we've gotten used to over the past, uh, over the course of our lives. And this is a, a much more interesting take on some of those traditional views held by Freud and Jung. An alternative, you might say. And some great diagrams, as you can see here in the book. There's just some really a ton of fabulous diagrams that, that trigger your imagination and mind into engaging with his ideas on a, on a fuller level, I would say. Personally, I'm a fan very much of his views, um, some of his insights when it comes to inferiority complex, especially as how that leads to war on a macro scale. But also his thoughts on depression. He believes that depression is something that will be healed naturally with time. And the only job of a psychologist with a depressed patient is to keep that patient alive. I mention that to my sister who works in the field uh, every day with these such people and she said wow and she's just starting her masters in psychology so I look forward to talking more with her about these ideas and theories given my background in psychoanalytic philosophy through my masters of course a lot of us have been forced to study psychoanalytic and psychotherapeutic philosophy and clinical approaches despite being in radically different fields oftentimes. Here's another great diagram. Yeah, look at that. He looks at breathing. And let me read you a quick passage from his chapter called The Holy Mountain. It is my belief that any philosophy which is not based upon the central recognition of the spirit is inadequate. 
either for the description or for the practice of human life. As to the meaning of this word spirit, I shall have more to say in the chapters that follow, but it seems to me that to be such an essential ingredient of life itself that life is dead without it. I claim, therefore, that all cause is to be found on the level of spirit, and that all that is not spirit rightly belongs to the level of effects. Although the concept of spirit must be vague, yet there is one analogy that is traditionally used to make its meaning plain. It is a very near analogy to describe spirit in terms of light, as light emerging and manifesting from a central source and penetrating through the darkness that surrounds it. Picture therefore a central light which is the creative source, with rays radiant in all directions. Follow one ray until it lights up some object on its path, lighting within it as it were a separate little ray of light or lantern. This new light then itself becomes another creative source, and it can repeat the same process from within itself, sending forth rays and giving birth again to other little lights. The living process is therefore one of extension, in manifestation from a basic hierarchy with each light capable as it is created, of being free and independent, creator in its turn, different and separate, yet also holding in its heart the image of its parent source. Hmm, beautiful words. Commenting also on the role of psychologists in his lifetime, usurping the role of the church, Eric Graham Howe had this interesting insight to say, In this matter, psychologists need to be reminded that they are now behaving as the churches did before them. Psychologists thought that they had seen through the compulsive schizophrenia of the churches, yet they have themselves fallen victim to the same disruptive and schismatic disease of disagreeably competing partialisms, each seeking to be recognized as not only right, but best. And here you can see the Druid and Psychologist clothing from the beautiful Anathema Publishing up here in Canada by Dr. Ian C. Edwards, side by side with really the fortunate blessing of this Druid of Harley Street book so that you can easily and affordably get access to a brilliantly edited and compiled collection of Eric Graham Howe's works without hunting down the uh, original books, which can be a, a trick, of course. And he wrote so many, you know, you'd have to get all of them. So it's always nice to have uh, compilations, especially if you're not going to spend your whole life doing this, but just want to indulge yourself in vamping up some of your understanding of even your own psychology, let alone if you work in the field like so many of us do. Yes, Anathema Publishing's work and publications are amazing. The books are amazing, of course. You can see here how gorgeous this book is at a relatively affordable price. Yes, not quite as affordable as the Druid of Harley Street paperback, of course, but yes, it's a it's a treasure, a treasure indeed, with great art art by the Black Monk, as he is called. Big thanks and shout out to Ian C. Edwards and Anathema Publishing. I can't wait to uh, now that I've gone through the books and have a good grounding of his thinking to get into some of the ideas and enjoy them with you. Upcoming on Magic Without Fears, the Hermetic Podcast. So I hope you tune in. And join my Patreon, of course, if you want to uh, contribute questions to be asked of Dr. Edwards about the work of E. Graham Howe and his druidism. The, the Psychologist Clothing Druid book is uh, limited, so if you miss out on it, it's gone forever. And uh, you might want to grab that then. Anathema Publishing. And check out my video on Dr. Ian C. Edwards, A Druid in Psychologist Clothing, which so many of you apparently liked. It caused me to make this video and share with you a bit of original music. Drop a like and subscribe and enjoy the tune.